the things that I find that is very helpful is actually to physically breathe, inhale, and then exhale on the arpeggio. So you have this. And for some reason, maybe it's a Zen or Tai Chi sort of movement, the muscles relax and they just fall and sink into the key. So this. For these staccato notes, quarter notes slurred, what I find is very helpful is to have a very firm tip of the finger um, with a free wrist and actually try to play a little bit beneath the escapement of the key. But actually hear the sound in your head before you play it. So. That really sort of gives me a lot of security, depending on the piano, because uh, every action is going to be different, every um, pedal is going to be different, etc. So then coming out of that A is the first major sort of gnarly little passage of fish scales, we used to call them uh, in school this year. And I practice this a number of different ways. I um, find that flatter fingers really helps. And think of down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. And using the wrist, down, up, down, down. And also having that impetus again of the pulse. One, two, one. There's a lot of possible finger choices here. We have three, 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 two, three, two, three, two, three, one, two, three, one. Or some people, sometimes I'll do three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, two, three. It really depends on the action of the piano that I'm playing on. Um, I'd like to say I use the same fingering on all pianos, but I, I don't, I adjust. Uh, because some pianos, you know, are heavier, some are lighter, etc. And I practice it very, very, very slowly. Like... Sorry. And then crescendo. I do that probably about five or six times slowly, very uh, first very slowly, and then gradually f faster. So, and then same thing with the left hand. to sound like a little bit of a bassoon, angry bassoon player. So, that's slightly under tempo. Um, if you, my allegro would be... Uh, one, two, one, two, 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 two. That's the ideal choice of tempo. Now we come to one of the more gnarly spots. Um, same pattern, the fish scale. And what I find really helpful is the use of the wrist, uh, really subtle adjustments where you in, out, out, in, in, out. So right there. I'm already adjusting my wrist to uh, in. Out. So here, in, out, in, out, 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 
on the white notes, I find if the wrist is slightly lower, and I'm talking very, very minimal, um, it really helps to get in and out of the keys. So the wrist, and then also the knuckle. So you're actually using the fingers and the wrist and the shape of the hand to go And this, you know, there's a number of choices, five, two, two, three, five, two, two, three, five. It's just what you don't want to do is, you want to, so again, this down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. If you look at my wrist, you'll see I'm down. where the wrist is really your secret weapon, I think. E -M -D 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 and if you keep the elbow even and just descend down the keys and but let your hand e -M -D -D that kind of bowing uh, or articulation it just takes patience and practice so you know, one, two, one. I find that again the black notes wrist up a little bit so down Then we come to this uh, gnarly triplet passage where I have practiced it in so many different ways in my lifetime, depending on where I'm at, uh, what else I'm working on. Sometimes this is, can really be problematic. Um, I have tried things like pushing down the key without making a sound, which can be really, really helpful, like maybe... more sensitive and even if you practice you just pushing down the keys without making a sound automatically sensitizes the, the fingers a little bit more so that you can have more dynamic control patience of practicing without the pedal a lot and then gradually as you increase the speed and accuracy and dynamic evenness start to integrate the pedal that works really really well for a lot of people another passage that I find uh, really helpful especially with the wrist is this diminished chord here instead of attacking the keys to actually using the wrist more um, buoyancy to the to the quality of sound rather than a percussive straight to body so it still can sound terrifying and not uh, unpleasant to the ear and that that really happens with the wrist yeah. Here, 
we have this wonderful, terrifying passage in the left hand. And, and I find it, it's really helpful to practice um, being conscious of your fifth finger, meaning when the weight shifts to the thumb, if so. so if you just lift the fifth, fifth, fifth finger a little bit in, and stay really close to the keys. So you actually have one, one kind of sound, then another one. So. To make the crescendo, I just use gravity. I don't push with my fingers. I just let my shoulders drop and I let my arm drop and then automatically I have a crescendo. Dropping shoulders. And so automatically that creates the kind of support and um, crescendo that I need. Now on the right hand, I remember when I studied this um, with uh, Brendel, um, and he uh, made a wonderful suggestion, which was the the, co the whole concept of direction, which was about um, then that this particular figure should have not necessarily a crescendo, but a direction, and so that. Uh, crescendo becomes really inevitable. The question is, how much direction do you give it? And the secret I find is just holding the pulse. Um, but this, this particular, it really has to have a, an orchestral sort of oboesque kind of timbre to it. I mean, it really is almost pleading with uh, what has previously happened. You know, so that contrast is very important. So now we come to the development section, which for a lot of people, this can be a challenge. So what, one of the things I find really helpful is to isolate each movement, like the two, four. From the knuckle. And then actually from the key. then integrating the thumb because it is marked fortissimo but you know it's not going to sound good if you play it the same dynamic really as the as the bass line like that's just too much but something like so because of the nature of the modern piano one has to sort of readjust here kind of a What's the word in string playing? Flotando, using the string in such a way where it vibrates. And I think that that's plenty for you. Again, the pulse of one, two, one. Psychologically, it really helps a lot if you don't think one, two, but one, one. And just forget about it while you're playing it, after you've practiced it, you know, a lot of different tempi and different dynamics, and then just... Yeah. Once you 
start thinking, you kind of get stuck in a rut. And then... Uh, So those are probably the hardest technical uh, physical challenges in the first movement, um, aside from the very, very, very soft recitative section with the pedal. Um, and then, of course, the ending of the movement, this D minor ar arpeggio. Uh, depending on the fingering, you some people use one, four, one, three. Three, five, one, two, five, one, two. And the secret for me is not to play it 100% evenly, but to actually create some kind of rumbling kind of texture. This is. practice it very slow and try to get it as evenly as I can and then a little So it's really a question of when you play it in tempo. Uh, um, I find the most important thing is Beethoven writes a fermata at the end, I think what he's saying is just disappear and hold. To be continued.